What's going on guys, Steel here, and I wanted to show you guys this map idea. Uh, it's about the Persian Gulf War, but specifically the Kuwait airfield, but a little not exactly all about the airfield, but yeah. As you can see, there's the uh, burning oil fields in the background, and uh, obviously it's just America versus Russia. Now it's made by a user called Wolfman, and as you can see, he's got... Uh, specified setups in relation to what might have been used during uh, during this conflict at least tank wise I mean we don't have f-15s and f-111s and stuff like that right now so obviously those <laughs> those can't be used but uh, yeah he's got a limited amount of Abrams 100 uh, spawns in total for the D or 100 yeah I think a player size 100 spawns in total for the Americans 120 for the uh, the Iraqis, I guess you could say, even though it's just Russian tanks, but, you know. Now, uh, this is a good, uh, pretty cool idea, you could say, because um, there was a another user on the forums uh, who had, uh, what was his name? His name is CK underscore 16, and he had an idea um, centered fully around the Persian Gulf conflict for both air battles and uh, some of the ground maps that he thought would work out and even some naval uh, area off the coast specifically for tanks you know the the, uh, the airfield as this map is supposed to be but actually centered towards um, the actual airfield this is just kind of just loosely it's just some guy's rendition just loosely based off of what he would uh, think would be like a war thunder scenario not exactly trying to promote like a cool idea. I just think it's cool. It's a cool map. It's a cool idea. Um, but obviously, others have proposed better, uh, more thought-out ideas. This is just someone bored making a map, you know. There is also another user. His name is Ryder2 on War Thunder Live, and he's actually working on a enduring confrontation for tanks, uh, taking some of the ideas that Gaijin has for air enduring confrontation and applying it to tanks. Um, I hope he gets it working somewhat soon for a test version because I'd love to do a video on it. And um, both his idea and some of the things in this mission that I'm playing uh, could actually be work, to, uh, work well together on top of my own kind of input of what I think would would be a good, uh, what would be a, like a good gameplay functionality. Now, because as you can see, it takes a long time to drive to the battle. Um, there's going to have to be some sort of filler uh, content in between um, more primary objectives. And for instance, on this uh, mission, not all of it is entirely labeled, but there's like a capture the refinery capture oil field um, there's two main caps that have like an actual proper cap circle cap time type thing that I think is actually uh, pretty fairly timed considering the size of what's going on like over there is an oil refinery of some sort and uh, I think that it would be pretty cool to have something say uh, like in air and during confrontation there are a lot of airfields that players can spawn at. Now in tanks, people don't want to keep driving the same, I don't know, let's say like maybe like 20 kilometers or whatever the hell, just throw a number out there every time. So maybe kind of almost actually almost like helicopter in air confrontation too, where the battle kind of takes place um, per each grid square. And the, the this, by the way, uh, as a side note, is, is for an enduring confrontation style while I'll get to the normal Kuwait centered battle here in a minute. But uh, for an enduring confrontation style, I think it would make sense that, say, both teams start off in tank spawns at the bare minimum, like the, the, the backmost line. And uh, there are bases that you have to capture. Um, that are in a in an order where you can kind of work up to the front line. Now, this is tr I'm kind of trying to alleviate the issue, which is especially with helicopter and during confrontation, where everybody will just spawn at a certain grid square because there's a battle going on there. 
Uh, you would want it to be a little bit more spread out, so it doesn't just feel like a slightly larger, uh, normal, like a normal battle. So, it's almost, it could almost be like a break mode type thing, uh, but on a wide scale, where, like, see, on this map, obviously, this isn't during confrontation, this is a normal map, but there's a lot of ground to cover. So I think it would make sense that, um, the map is proportionally sized so the driving doesn't get too boring but there's also enough of an of a time between engagements that allow for you to just kind of observe and and maneuver around and stuff but it would all still have to be centered around an objective because if there's no mo motive for somebody to go somewhere then they'll never go there so like I said I think it would be better as there's like neutral bases that you have to capture um, that each team can kind of assault and kind of how when people are around a certain airfield and, and during confrontation and uh, primarily in sim now it's not really in RB anymore but for those that did play they'll kind of know what I'm talking about here is that uh, you'll be alerted to when a certain base tank base is under attack and you can have um, AI tanks and or anti-tank this is why I think it would be cool to have AI that are like say like there's infantry with a with a uh, tow launcher, like a Cornet launcher or something, something that is uh, stationary that can be machine gunned. So there's more use for you know machine guns or high explosive rounds or a top tier. Obviously, there's heat rounds, but like heat multi-purpose is a thing that the Americans use. In fact, most nations use. The Russians would obviously get the use out of high explosive, but I think it would make sense that uh, you could kind of focus people on objectives, but at the same time allow there to be distance so people can actually flank around, people can maneuver against other groups of tanks, stuff like that. I think if it's too big, then it's not going to work, because this also relies on a large amount of players, which I think an enduring confrontation setup of, say, uh, 64 players, so 32 on each team, uh, depending on the size, it would have to, the size of the battle the map would have to depend on how many people you want to fit into the game you could go really big with 64 players on each team um but i think i think that uh 32 would would be good uh per team <laughs> because if you had 64 per team then it can connectivity issues might become a problem which is definitely a problem in helicopter and during competition but for some reason not in sim even when you have a full lobby i I assume it's down to the amount of players that play, but I don't know, there could be other server-related factors, but, um, but like I said, it would just, it would be really good to, well, actually, <laughs> before I say that, as you can see, that's the airfield that you're supposed to fight over, but the way this guy, and this is his first version, but the way he has it set up, there, you can do all the objectives, like what I'm going to do, which is capture the refinery and whatnot, it'll basically just bleed the tickets out, and by the time you get to the airfield, the game could just be over. <laughs> if you destroy the, the aircraft, which is like the main goal. Um, but enduring confrontation wise, Riot is trying to do World War II first, so it might hamper its ability to be interesting because if it's World War II, tanks can be you know much slower. Uh, it might be even more boring. I think modern tanks is where enduring confrontation can excel the most because of the engaging engagement distances. Now, of course, this is on a desert map and. If Gaijin were to actually at some point make their own maps for enduring confrontation tanks, they would want to detail it as much as possible, and if they have to detail a large area, it would take a very, very long amount of time, a lot of resources, and there would be a lot of issues, a lot of map design issues with each map. Like, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but when they reworked Vietnam, they had reworked a rock that was see-through on one side and not on the other, that was in the middle of a road towards the... I believe it's the A cap on domination in the northern part of the map. And it was there for like two weeks, and people could just hide in it on the one side and wait for people to drive past them on the other and pop out and kill them. It was legitimately just a it was like a one sided or one way mirror almost. It was it was really stupid. And as you can see here I'm like just tearing up a, a base camp now. Obviously I have AI set, but say um there are camps, and as you can see on the minimap, there are like ammo resupply points, which are other spawn. They're not spawns, but they're just they're just ammo replenishment bases. They're protected by AA, but it's nothing major. I think um, a good a good idea about this would be to have actual AA tanks, AI controlled. Say for the Americans or like NATO side, you could have VADs, 
and for the Soviets you could have Shilkas, so there's no missiles involved, just, just guns, but uh, they would still be relatively accurate enough to be a threat if you flew over them. So helicopters would have to keep their distance, aircraft would have to be mindful and not just spawn camp all the time, <laughs> and not just spawn bomb, because that's the other thing too. It would require SPA to be more uh, more involved because, say, like on a desert scenario, you're in the open, you can be seen very easily. There's no cover to run and hide from view. It's You're going to have to rely on teamwork and someone using an SPA, which would probably make uh, escort type AA more... Uh, more usable for um, close engine engagements. Now, at a lower battle rating, it would definitely work. But at top tier, where ATGMs and you know fast jets exist, I think it would be more mindful to say like have an ADATS or two run with a group of like a, say a squad of three Abrams, and they have an ADATS to cover them, or T72s or T80s or whatever, what have you, with a Tungushka or so. I think it would uh, it would encourage some teamwork, and it would pay off for everybody. Um, there's a lot of things that come into account, like spawn point costs um, for vehicles, spawn timers, say for, like in Sim, at Phantom will have a 30 minute, I believe, cooldown, versus, because it's at the top end of a BR bracket for enduring confrontation, versus like a lower battle rating, or the start of battle rating, which it can just constantly spawn, so, say like M60s and T62s could spawn constantly, but Abrams and T80s, and T-72s would have like a 30 or 15 minute cooldown depending on the, the battle rating. So that's uh, that would have to be something taken into account. There's a lot of work to go on this and I think it would be nice to have a group uh, group together to kind of work something out for this uh, made by the community first so we do some of Gaijin's work for them um, before actually telling them to do something, uh, suggesting to them something like this which I, th I actually think would be pretty entertaining. Uh, to, to have to engage with Gaijin and be like, hey, we made this game mode for you. You should you should try it out. Uh, we can do you know testing for it. It will take a lot of testing, and that's where the community comes in to uh, test this on their own. I would like to have people test a mission like this, um, and, and also rides uh, enduring confrontation whenever he can get that playable. I think it would be I think it would be pretty cool to have a big group of people to test it out. Now. In regards to a normal mission, such as the uh, the forum user CK16, who was talking about Kuwait, now he could use, like he was saying in his thing, which by the way I will put all of those missions in the description for uh, you to look at, or just the concepts if you will, that you could use the tank map and then the air map could be centered around the tank map, much how they've used, I believe Tunisia they used it for, Maginot Line. I believe a few tank maps. El Alamein, I, I know that one is pretty common. It's a tank map, but turned into an Air RB centered map. Um, I think for his Kuwait airfield one, it would be really interesting because some it would be something like cargo port, where it's flat ground, but it's also kind of urban. But it would be fighting over an airfield rather than these stupid corridors. So most of the map, like I know Squad has a map where you can fight over an airfield, and there's some sand dunes that you can kind of hide in uh, both vehicles and infantry now obviously we don't have infantry in War Thunder it's just just tanks but you get the idea tanks could hide in little defilades almost like the open part of Sinai but in the middle would be an airfield that you actually have to fight over you would have to take risks to expose yourself or some areas it would rely on people using smoke and cover fire and um, aircraft and, and helicopters a lot more there would be a lot more dynamic combat um, compared to a lot of maps from War Thunder where I feel like people just know that there's spots where they can just camp and they'll never move there and they'll keep killing people as they drive by trying to save their team from getting <laughs> raffle stomped and I think his Kuwait map would uh, which he shows an artificial-esque spawn picture what it would look like for the map because um, he has a actual like an old spy plane looking photo of it just showing where this, he would think uh, the spawn should go I think it would be cool to see a map like that. I think it would be cool for when we do get uh, even more modern jets, which we will end up eventually getting, because they did, Gaijin did admit that they want to do some beyond visual range type missile deals with their, their missile changes, which they finally implemented the uh, the diamond. But uh, yeah, I, I, th I think it would be pretty interesting to have a big scale map 
mainly again it would be something for veteran Th this is actually a double whammy so one it offers new um game mode options for uh veteran players that have played the game for a really long time and are kind of bored with the old system it would allow veteran players that have nothing to do really other than grind nations that maybe they don't want to grind to actually use what they've acquired to help test um a new game mode that would m sufficient would be sufficient for top tier now world war ii again it would get kind of weird but for top tier to test it then they could take what they think would be would be a good size which may be too small or too big for um world war ii i'm thinking like later world war ii little little low tier tanks it definitely would be too big but you could experiment and then you could get the formula going for top tier and its engagement ranges and then kind of scale it down so actually work in reverse instead of world war two to, mo to modern day and like you work up that way you actually go from modern day all the way down to the early parts of world war two and, and work backwards i think that uh that would definitely be really interesting to see and something that i mean if they want the game to survive longer then you gotta start <laughs> you gotta start taking risks you gotta start uh experimenting with things that this game has the capacity to do now i know that render ranges based off a of crew skill are a problem uh because i've messed with a lot of maps like this which are really really far out tanks kind of rubber band at range because the game doesn't update their position too well it would definitely be something that would uh take a toll on the game's performance or it would have it would require gaijin to help or change the way the game works so longer range engagements can happen so people render properly they don't just slide around they would be smoothly moving and i think it would be kind of hard for them te uh, technicality wise if that makes sense technically technical i don't know you get what i'm saying it, it just technology wise and coding wise it would probably be a a pain in the ass and not something that they would be willing to do but if we can prove some sort of proof of concept on the current system we have in War Thunder, I think they would be more inclined to experiment in their own right. Now I've got no more f footage to show you guys, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it there. I'm gonna put all of the links of all of these missions or scenarios, whatever you wanna call them, in the description. And I encourage you guys to check them out. So yeah, that's it for me. No more, no more, no more rambling. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, I'm Stu Wolf, and I'll see you all next time.